I'm Eddie Cadell. And I'm Tom Cano. Welcome, everyone. This is the Mortgage Brothers Podcast Show. And today we are going to be talking about really or answering a question a lot of people are asking us right now. Yeah. Is today a crazy or dumb time to buy a home? And we're going to go through some very simple things and questions to help answer this question. And this is not, it is kind of self-serving in a way because we do home loans. But we come at this from a very practical, common sense perspective, and we hope you can use this advice today, next year, and decades from now. That's right. And, and this is for informational purposes only. Um, if you like what we're doing here, here at the Mortgage Brothers team, we're licensed right here in the state of Arizona. But this, these concepts about whether or not to buy now, we think apply anywhere in the country. And again, if you like our podcast, be sure to subscribe, comment, and like. We'd be happy to help you with any of your questions or scenarios. All you know, right. A lot of family members, a lot of friends, people who are especially first time home buyers, you know, they people who have not purchased, some people who have never purchased, you know, people who have, have have never purchased a home are wondering, should I buy now? I mean, interest rates are high. And the answer is yes, they are. I'm sorry, they, they, of course, the interest rates are high. Mm -hmm. And this as of this recording, interest rates are higher than they have been uh, in the last 12 months, 24 months, of course. Yeah. And in any market, you know, like we're in right now where you have low inventory and pricing is high and you have high interest rates. The obvious question is, is, is now a good time to buy a home? I definitely don't need to like hit it perfect, but is it a dumb idea? And that's what this is here to help just alleviate any pressure. And can I just go, yeah. go to the, go to the punchline? Yeah. The punchline is no. Okay. It's not a bad time to buy, but you have to answer yes and understand these points that we're going to go through. Yeah. So it, the, so it can be a bad time to buy. We do not want to just be filling you guys with, you know, just this kind of sales copy of just saying, yeah, everything's always great. Like, you know, people right, nothing, always, nothing to see over here. Yeah. You know, whether it's a car salesman or, you know, someone, a real estate agent saying, oh yeah, it's always the best time. Always a great time. We're not trying to sell. We're and, just and, trying to give you some advice. Yes. And so we, we, we want to be real honest with you. It's not always the best time to buy. So here we go. We came up with four questions. If you answer yes to all of these questions, then you're not crazy if you want to buy a house right now. Okay. What's number one? All right. Are you looking to buy a primary home? Primary Maybe home versus what? A second home or investment property. Okay. Very critical. Is it a primary home? Okay. What's number two? So if the answer is yes. Again, I want to buy a primary home. I want to live in it. Okay. Question two, do you plan on staying in the same general area for at least two to three years? Meaning, am I going to stay in this house for at least, you know, that period of time, two, three years? Yeah. Is it more long-term? Yeah. Or am I looking to get some, out of here and Some go people to are at an interim stage. They're they're mm -hmm. taking a job for six months, 12 months, 18 months. That's a very big deal. If you're in this, going to be in the same area for at least a couple of years, that's another big yes. Okay. Okay. But again, we have to say yes to four, four questions. Two left. Do you have steady income and good credit versus, you know, I have a commission job that depends on real estate sales or mortgage sales. I mean, if you're, if your income's up and down, up and down year after year, that's not steady, of course, right? But if you have steady income that you can count on with good credit, you answer yes or no to that. If you answer yes, okay. Good. There's one more question. One more question. The last one. This is actually really good. Do you have the natural desire for home ownership? There's nothing that says you need to go out and buy a home. Some people have been renting for 20, 30, 40 years. Some people, actually be interesting to find out the stat, some people don't ever own a home. Right. They just oh, yeah. don't own a home. Why? They've never had the desire. They've always felt like if I need to, you know, travel the world or if I want to move or the neighbor next to me bothers me, I can just, I can just get a new lease. And there's, yeah, and there's nothing anyone can really do to convince that person yeah, and, that, and, that, and that home ownership is good. Yeah, and nor should they. I mean, yeah. again, home ownership is one of the quickest ways to build wealth, but life is not all about money. Yeah, so I, you don't want to be wealthy and you want to rent in different cities. You're right. And if you go into home ownership without that natural desire, you're going to probably screw it up. Yeah. You're going to go and in. You're, you're not going to enjoy. The quality of life will, will diminish. You're going to be replacing things that you wouldn't normally replace. You'll be always anxious. Yeah. Stressed. You know, so. Okay. So, like so just to recap, the four things. Is it a primary home? Are you planning on staying in the same area? Do you have a steady income and good credit? Do you have a good job? Um, and do you have the natural desire to want to own a home? Okay. So what we also want to say this. Just because you answer yes to all those questions. Does there is there is a possibility there is an exception? It may not be a good time to purchase a house right now, and that is right here. 
it, we were trying to say it's, there's one exception. What is that? Yeah, the one exception is basically <laughs> if we are in a market which is actively and aggressively declining, yeah. then you would be very prudent to take pause, to step back and say, how long is this decline going to be happening? How big is it? So, you know, so that's the big thing. Now, if some people say, well, the market is going to decline. I'm sorry, folks, but people have been saying the market's going to decline for years and years and years, and they have been renting. They've been paying someone else's mortgage for years and years. So don't think you have a crystal ball. Yeah. If it's your dad, if it's your mom, if it's your uncle, even the, as much as you love them, the more that if they forecast that something's going to happen, well, and then they have been calling the tops and bottoms like when things are, uh, you know, if they, if they have a really, really good track record, yeah. but I'd like to know their name, yeah. email I, and phone number. How about this? If any of them predicted the Great Recession in 2008, then I might listen to and, them. And if they predicted that the market would rally for 13 years. Right. So the point yeah, then is, I would listen to them. Yeah. So because people were called, when, when we had the recession, there were a lot of people who actually were maybe calling the recession. But they would have said in 2016, we've topped out. Yeah, topped out. 2017, topped out. We had a really team, topped out. 2019, topped out. Why? It's easy to forecast something that you think is going to happen yeah. because, well, statistically, eight years is when every, you know, every recession happens. It's very, very simple. So you need to ask. And then this is a, way, a good reason to really follow this show, you know, subscribing, because it's something that we try to look at and monitor all the time. Are we actively, you know, declining or are we or do we have appreciation in the market mm -hmm. we're trying to keep a pulse on it but if we are actively in the moment declining and yeah i'm not i don't care about the house that's down the street or a couple homes that you know of or someone said a lot of people are saying oh yeah there's these homes down the street that have you know they they, they lower their they lowered their their asking price, price. yeah no, well, that doesn't mean that. the market's declining i mean, I mean overall right. not, not just some greedy seller who listed it really high and is now dropping their price. We're talking about overall market. Is it declining? If the answer is yes, it's a, probably a good idea to hold off and wait until there's some confirmation. Yeah, wait till you can you have a little more stability. Stability, yeah. Okay, what's next? Okay, these are just important notes we wanted us to talk about because I know this is an important topic people, right? Because if they're trying to answer this question, am I crazy to buy right now? Okay, so you need a place to call home. You need somewhere to live. You're either gonna be renting that place, you're gonna be paying somebody, yeah, you got to be somewhere. And again, mm -hmm. that's why is it a primary home is so important. We're not talking about second homes. We're not talking about investment homes. We're not talking about, you know, your third place in New York City. No, we're talking about the one place you go to after work. Yeah. So you're either going to be paying your mortgage or you're going to be paying your landlord's mortgage. All right. So you, it, when you are the tenant, the landlord gets the appreciation over time. You don't. Right. It's so important. And had a landlord set their rent, a lot of times they pretend that they're the ones that actually are just buying the home. And they're like, well, that's what the mortgage is. That's what the rent's going to be. That's how you establish rental markets. Yes. So home ownership is the actually the, the number one wealth building vehicle that people have used. Period. Period. Yeah. yeah. Especially in America. Yep. You know, um, it's just it, probably in the world, but definitely in America, home ownership uh, is something that that, that wins. Okay, wins over all things. Yeah, so quality of life, we we talk about this too, but it's very difficult being happy when when you're renting when you know you really just want to be a homeowner. So, and again, that's why I'm point number four. We said you have a natural desire to own a home. If you don't, then your quality of life is not going to change whether you're renting or not. Yeah. But if you really were kind of born to own. It's not going to be real fun to be yeah, renting for five years. This is not for the person who uh, the person who says, "I love renting. I really enjoy the freedom and flexibility." That, then that's great. But there are people we know who have been trying to buy a house for five years and they hate being a, a, rent, a, a, a renter. Yeah, they want to own. Quality of life would have been much better if they just would have pulled that trigger five years ago. All right, what's the fifth point? What are the really like investing one on one rules? And yeah, we want you to know that maybe you've heard this before to get the best results from the stock market. It isn't to buy low and sell high. I mean, that, that I may mean, be we, great if you we, could, we, we would love to do that. <laughs> right. But if you can time the bottom and, you know, and buy and time the top and sell, well, you would be a genius and you wouldn't, need and you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. Yeah, you wouldn't need a loan. You wouldn't, we would be coming to you for a loan. <laughs> and the, the idea is that that is, although that's wonderful, what the best investors in the world have found is it's not timing the market, you know, the bottoms and tops. It's the, t the length of time 
in it. The longer you own something, the better the returns. Yeah, the longer you're in that market, you are going to you know, achieve those results over longer periods of time and have greater results. The home is much like the investment market. Yeah, It's not timing when you are going to buy the home. And if you had a crystal ball, you would. But if you can't, it's just important to get into the home so that you have time in the home, not timing the home. That's right. All the all the data will show that homes appreciate on average. It's usually inflation, which is about three percent, like under the average, three percent plus maybe one percent. So maybe four percent, especially in the Phoenix market or any kind of growing market economy like like Phoenix or Arizona. Four um, percent. That is what you can pretty much hang your hat on over time. Okay, yeah. not, not year to year, it may be go down, may go up, but average is gonna be 4%. And it is hard to catch up to 4%, especially when it gets out of, you know, ahead of you. Yeah, and if, even, if, you, if, you, if you postpone, 4% can be very difficult to catch up with. Yeah, and even if you do buy the market, does eventually go down a couple years later, it is going to rebound and it's going to recapture what you lost at one point. So as long as nobody panics and you stay in that home, like we talked about staying in the market, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, your grandkids will look at you or your friends will look at you and say, wow, how did you acquire $600,000 of equity? And yeah. it was because you simply went to work and you came home and you paid your mortgage. I think it's also very important just to stay humble when it comes to like prognosticating or forecasting the future. I mean, we just, it's so, so difficult. There are people, of course, the news media is going to be talking and having headlines. You're going to be watching YouTube channels talking about, oh, the market's going up, the market's going down. Be very careful. I think the humble person who's just as a, a, basically, it's wisdom. This the wise man will wait, be patient, and will be humble. You know. Wow, there you go. We're you getting know, we're getting deep. Yeah, getting deep. They, they, like, and I think it really that's that's a, a very wonderful virtue of a great homeowner investor. I agree. And last but not least, what about second homes and investment properties? Yeah, because we've only been talking about primary homes, but we know that homes can also come in the form of a second home or they can come in, you know, the form of an investment property. So what do we do with those? Yeah, people are asking me right now, they want to buy a house up in Northern Arizona. It's like it's, literally today. Today. Today yeah, I'm talking on the we, phone. We got a call. Yep. And they want to know if they should be buying up there. They really, really, really want to buy up there. This is a person who has very stable income, great assets. They've always wanted to buy a house in the cooler weather up in you know, a cabin up there, up north. Here's the deal with the second cabin or the second home. Who cares if the interest rate's high right now? You know, life, the quality of life of a borrower um, or I'm sorry, a, you know, a second home owner, they every day that goes by, the set the use of a second home. Is different. Yeah, well, think right? about it, it too. Whole, it has everything to do with the quality, All about of, quality life. of life. I mean, and they could be in their jobs 15, 20, 25 years and finally be in a position to own a second home. Yeah. Again, drinking coffee on that porch with those fall leaves. But oh no, interest rates are higher than what they thought. So what do they do? Wait another five years? They may not have good health in five years. Yeah. So again, in terms of buying a second home, if you're financially in a very stable position and you this is something you've always wanted to do, now is a fine time to buy because you're going to be in it, hopefully for a long time. Yeah, and we'll refinance it. It will get into a lower rate. But if you're finan again, if you're financially secure, why why wait to enjoy that second home until you you're you're in a you know a wheelchair? Yeah, I'm going to wait until pricing comes down. Yeah. Well, again, how long are you going to wait? Yeah, you can't do much in the woods when you know you can't walk. Right. Okay. What about investment properties? Okay, investment properties. It's okay to buy if you either believe the home pricing will continue to appreciate. You're buying this is really, you know that you're getting a great value. Uh, yeah. Some, maybe it's an off-market deal. Like you know somebody who's selling a home on your street. Great deal. You're going to get 30% off. And, and again, housing market mm -hmm. is showing signs of appreciation, which today we are still in that appreciating market, which even though it's a head scratcher, some people do believe it's going to continue to appreciate. So if you yeah. think that, which is which is fine, then it would be okay for you to buy an investment property. How about point number two on our investment property? Okay, so you've got a great investment opportunity you can't pass up. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's something like, like, that's that great property that you just heard about. It's great value. Maybe you're getting, you know, 30% off the, the value or 30%. Yeah. Maybe it's- um, how, how about an uncle? An uncle it is selling, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a family home or the uncle is selling a home that you've always actually wanted. Guess what? Are you going to be looking at the market and opening up what the feds just said? Yep. No. You're going to be saying, 
I've always wanted that property. I'm buying. That's an investment. I'm going to rent it to my kids. I'm going to do whatever to it. So in that case, it's okay to buy an investment property as well. That's right. So I hope that this has helped really clarify for you whether or not you're crazy to buy in this market right now. And if you want us to discuss this with you, maybe you're looking at a current home right now for a primary residence, second home or investment, the Mortgage Brothers would be happy to help you. Again, we are licensed in the state of Arizona. That's really the only the state of Arizona. Um, but again, reach out to us, subscribe, and uh, we'll be back. All right. Hey, thank you, folks. Thank you for watching the Mortgage Brothers podcast. If you have any questions, email us at team at azmortgagebrothers.com. And if you like this content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Mortgage Brothers team.